our Professor Chess videos where we're looking at the Gioco Piano, uh, a very interesting old chess opening. Not so much in use in the Grandmasters anymore these days, but it could hold some clever surprises for us lesser mortals as we spring this on someone. Uh, the criticism about it is probably justified on the Grandmaster scale, but since we're not to that point, we could probably use some really good primers on this opening, and it, it, it's, it has some great games to illustrate a lot of excellent uh, chess principles to us that I think is always worth emphasizing, always worth understanding. The more you repeat and do and practice something, <coughs> the easier and better it gets. After all, you walk every day, right? At one time, you couldn't walk very well. So here we have the Gioco Piano, and white brings up the C3 pawn. And true to form, black will bring up this other knight. <clears throat> this is usually pretty much standard, and of course, he's going to push that queen pawn. Because he's pushed the C pawn, then he can push this queen pawn twice. There are other openings with the Gioco, where there are other variations, I should say, where they don't push the C pawn, but they will put the queen pawn right here. And I found some games that do that. Both, both white and black will do that. And that leads to some other interesting dynamic uh, changes of place. Usually when white pushes this queen pawn here, the pawn will take it. It's, it's going to be challenged. And sure enough, the pawn takes the pawn, and the pawn takes the pawn. Now at this point... The two white pawns dominate the center of this board. Uh, black, if he knows what he's doing, is not going to allow this to, uh, to be there for very long. And bishop comes to b4 check, which is another typical move in the Gioco Piano. Here, it's prevented with knight c3, developing a piece, stopping the check. And again, the knight will take the e4 pawn, the king pawn, putting pressure on this knight here because white hasn't castled yet. So this is a typical Gioco piano at this point, and white to get out of it is, of course, going to castle. Now, the knight in this game takes the knight at c3. That's one such move in the Gioco piano that's kind of interesting. And, of course, he's going to respond by taking the knight also. The bishop here... Whoop. The bishop takes the c3. Now it's interesting here, he's threatening the rook. You can see that. But watch what white does. White comes up here, bishop to a3. He's going to prevent the king, the black king, from castling. He's going to sacrifice the rook. He's going to sacrifice the exchange. But that's not what happens either. Now, black brings up the d5 pawn to prevent a disaster on the very weak square, f7. It's more important that he prevents this disaster than taking the rook. So you can see there's some dynamic going back and forth, preventions and tricks going on here. Bishop comes up here to b5, pinning the knight to the king. The bishop finally does take the rook. He says, look, if you're not going to move the rook, then I am going to go ahead and take the rook. And the rook will come over here to rookie one, taking that beautiful file, check to the king. Now, if the king moves, he can't castle, and black's aware of this, so he's going to pop that pawn right there, or the bishop, I mean. Uh, at e6 to prevent the check. So he puts his bishop into a pinned position to prevent the check, of course. Queen's going to come over here to a4. Now we're beginning to see some really powerful lines coming here at the king. Very, it, It's building up in its intensity. He brings the rook over here to b1, or I mean b8, b1. What a clown. Now the knight comes up here to e5. A good centralization. He's got an outpost. Uh, White's starting to look a little bit more powerful. He's far better developed, isn't he? The, uh, the imbalance is black only has one uh, knight and two bishops. 
Well, so does white. White has one knight and two bishops. White is better developed, however, than black, and he is still preventing black from castling, and he's got the castling here, and, and he can pretty much... That's interesting. He, he brought the knight up. The queen comes to c8, and now the bishop takes c6. Check. The b pawn takes the bishop, which opens up the file for the rook here. You notice he's not just going after material. He's playing more of a position play situation here instead of simply scooting over there and taking the material. Uh, that really doesn't progress your attack. He's obviously going to... He's keeping this king in the center of the board, so he has to act fast. If you keep your king in the center of the board, if you keep your opponent's king in the center of the board, then go get that king. And that, that appears to be White's modus operandi here. Queen comes up here and goes, check. King finally does have to move to d8. So he prevented the black king from castling. Now he can go get him. He's wide open and he's in the center of the board. This is the clue. Now it's time to go attack that king. Absolutely. And look at this beautiful fork he forced. Ouch. Check to the king and fork to the rook. Of course, the bishop virtually has to take that knight. And now, bishop comes here. E7 checkmate. That is a cool little game. Notice again, the rook on the open file supports this bishop to take a checkmate, and the queen has him crossed. And he left that bishop in price for five or six moves. So by not chasing the material, moving your rook out of play just to get a bishop, and then having to bring it all the way back over and losing two moves, it gave white a chance to do a pretty good attack. That's not a bad little Gioco piano game. Okay, let me show you another one here. All right, this is out of Graham Burgess's really interesting book, The Mammoth Book of Chess. This is on page 121 in the open game session on his uh, view of the game of Vasiliev and Shabanov. This is in the USSR in 1989. So this is fairly recent. And it is a Gioco piano. And it is a typical Gioco piano for the first couple of moves. And then after that, it gets real interesting. Bishop and Bishop. Shabanov does it correct that way. And notice that Vasiliev immediately castles pretty quick. And, of course, Shabanov brings out that second knight. This is all typical uh, Gioco piano. And now he brings up d4 once again. Here, the bishop takes the d4. Very similar to what we saw in the other game, right? And then the knight takes the d4. And then the knight takes the knight. And the bishop comes up here to g5. Again, really the same as the last game I showed you in the last video, in, in this last time. He says here f4 is another good alternative, so that we can see this pattern uh, bringing on. And of course he's going to want to remove that bishop. And the bishop wants to stay there, keeping that knight pinned, so that he doesn't come into here in the center and really dominate this board. And he does the same thing with the g5, and he brings up the f4. And now, the knight comes back to e6. Very interesting difference. All the way the same until this move of that last game that we saw, huh? So here's another different little interesting variation. Now, the bishop takes the e6 knight. And the d-pawn will take the bishop. So now we can see the queens are opened up to each other. And he does take the, the queen there, check, to the king, and the king does take the queen there. Now we have a really interesting wide open black king. So you're starting to see the idea here, uh, the similar pattern with the Gioco Piano, is 
it does leave black with an uncastled king very vulnerable and now that he's in the center now white's dominating is go white's plan i should say is to dominate this board and go after that king and let's see how he does it f5 takes g5 a good pawn for him to take knight takes the e4 pawn he has doubled pawns in the center here. Black is controlling the center pretty good, but the king is awfully open, man. And he now goes g6, discovered check to his king, and he's pressing a very dangerous pass pawn here. King has to dodge over back to e8 again. Rook is going to take the f7. Wow, what an interesting game. See, you know... To say this doesn't have dynamic potential as an opening, I, I think is kind of underestimating it. These are two world, world grandmaster uh, Soviet players going at this. The knight comes down here to g5, putting the question to the rook. And, of course, the bishop is going to take g5. And the pawn is going to take the bishop, thus opening up this file here for black. So this is pretty dynamic. I think white's got this pretty close to done, though. And now here comes the other knight. He's going to develop this other side, bring the other rook out. And I, I, don't, think, I don't think black's going to survive this. I really don't. Oh, and the knight comes all the way out here to b5 again, and he's going to take it to the, take it to the limit. No, that's not right. Knight b5. Then the rook took h6. That's what happened. I knew I was missing something. Boy, that's the trouble with reading through the book. Rook takes the h8, h, h, g6, and then this other rook comes over here to f1. And now the game is over. Black retires. He says, you know, that's enough fun and games for the, <laughs> for the night. But there is a really instructive game. Uh, unfortunately, the other interesting thing to notice is black really didn't get the full development that white was able to do in this uh, Gioco Piano. We've seen a basic pattern with the Gioco Piano that, as a general rule, white can really hustle and get his king castled fast. And if he plays the game right, he can prevent black from castling. We've seen that in a couple of games now. The domination of the center can alternate depending on how each other plays. So, yes, the opening is symmetrical. But, man, you can make some interesting things happen with this Gioco Piano, can't you? Anyway, there is the chess lesson for the day. Uh, unfortunately, I can't remember. I've been doing so many videos lately, I can't remember if this is the first or second one in this video. I'm just going to call this some good at this time. Tell you to have a great time studying chess. Work hard at it. Have fun. Remember, chess has got to be fun. If you don't have fun in chess, if you don't explore new options and new themes, then what's the point, right? It's fun. Don't let it go to your head if you get really good. And don't let it discourage you if you suck like I do. <laughs> and I will see you in the next video.